I noticed a curious trend in the 2023 brevet season. On the first 200k ride, a friend and I rode at roughly the same pace and finished at the same time, yet he needed 30 fewer watts than me for the same performance. It happened again this year on a windy 300k, except the difference grew even more. He needed 40 fewer watts less than me, and again for almost exactly the same performance. Uh, often late at night when I'm feeling down, which is you know, it's a really common experience for randomers to go through our ups and downs, but I'll often blame my sorry state on the extra effort or the extra energy I've had to put out throughout the course of a brevet. So it's time to put on my detective hat and figure out what's going on. Why is it that I need so much extra power for the same performance compared to the people that I ride with? For four brevets in 2023 where I had clean data, Three to four Strava stockable randonneurs from each event also recorded power data and finished within very similar moving times. Between all of these, my average time moving was within 1% of theirs, but required I produce 13% more average and weighted power and burn 12% more calories. Assuming power meter accuracy, that's an average of 20 watts for the same speed and 300 extra calories every 100 kilometers. When I found out why, it completely changed my preparations for 2024, and maybe it can help your preparations too, so let's dive in. Making more power, needing it, and fueling for it could be a simple effect of just having a larger body size, and that scales everything up. According to national statistics, I'm 13 centimeters or 5 inches taller than the average middle-aged male here, and I carry an extra 18 kilograms, which is like 40 pounds. That checks out at the start line where I'm often one of, if not the tallest and heaviest riders. If you're in the same boat, fear not. Research suggests this is an incomplete assessment. A 2012 study looked at the cyclist body makeup and their finishing times in the 600 kilometer Swiss cycling marathon. Analysis found that higher body fat percentage strongly correlated to a slower finishing time. Meanwhile, height had no association with finishing time and Unlike other studies, links to body weight, BMI, and muscle mass were not strong enough to be significant. This difference could be due to their analysis techniques or the course's modest climbing profile, reducing the impact of weight on finishing time. The research suggests that my problem just needs to be reframed. Needing more power for the same speed is an obvious side effect of larger size, but it also largely gets canceled out by the extra power produced by extra muscle mass, at least on courses with modest elevation gain. Size in the form of excess body fat though, it just adds weight to carry up the climbs and extra mass to push through the wind without any real performance benefit. Does that mean that I'm leaving performance on the table because I eat all the food on the table? Recently, I got my first comprehensive health check, including a full body scan courtesy of my new job. The results show that my body fat percentage places me pretty far to the right of Konechly's graph. Not great. My spirits weren't even lifted by a group of fellow 21 percenters who overperformed in the study. I'm carrying too much fat. I can feel it, and my doctor agrees. The report says I should lose 6 kilograms or 13 pounds of fat simply for general health, which was a real eye-opener. If you've been putting off a health check, let this be a reminder to schedule it. All else being equal, meeting doctor recommendations should result in about a 7% watts per kilo boost, a small drop in frontal area, and a very tiny improvement in rolling resistance. Modeling suggests when we add all of these things together, that gap between others that was uh, on average 20 watts and about 300 calories extra that I needed to consume, that'll be cut in half just by meeting the doctor recommendations, which is really motivating. Six kilos of fat is about 46,000 calories, so this is going to take a little while, which is just fine. I'll be tracking, of course, with the scale, but also tracking body composition with my smartwatch. This isn't perfectly accurate, but it can tell if weight loss is coming from water, from fat loss, or even from muscle loss. It's highly likely that I'll need to compensate for some muscle loss uh, just by doing some gym work as well. Uh, the watch itself is not super accurate. Uh, it reads about four percentage points higher than the hospital machine, so I'll just have to compensate for that as we're going along and measuring. My strategy for fat loss will be quite dull, but also something I think anybody can do. 
and that's to maintain a caloric deficit and increase food quality just by addressing low-hanging fruit that's part of my day-to-day -day life. For me, that means uh, addressing dietary fat and food volume, as opposed to something like too many sweets or ultra-processed foods. Black coffee rather than with full-fat cream and having oil and butter servings are a start. For example, my morning oatmeal and fruit is delicious with only half the butter, but maybe a bit more cinnamon. For lunch, no more deep-fried cheesy pork or stir-fried pork belly. These are daily items at the work cafeteria and probably my biggest dietary error of 2023. Instead, their rotation of well-balanced rice-based meals are also really delicious. Big salads and lots of vegetables are already part of my daily dinner, but I'll eat them first to get a bit full before diving into the more calorie-dense main courses. Reducing alcohol since the body scan has already helped me get better sleep and should have weight loss benefits over time too. Fueling on the bike can't be ignored either. Uh, last year, I wanted to practice with heavy fueling to prepare for events and prepare my gut to consume lots of carbs. It had a lot of positive effects on training and events, but it also meant that most of my exercise barely had a calorie deficit. I have good systems in place this year, so I don't need to target as complete fueling for typical low intensity training rides, but I can still fuel enough to avoid bonking and to support recovery. I'll save heavy fueling for the events. These basic changes should keep my stomach happy, keep my taste buds happy, and also allow for a significant cut in calories consumed. Hopefully this cut is enough to also overcome the adjustments in metabolism that the body makes during chronic caloric deficit. I hope to reach my goal weight for the fall brevets that are extra long so I can feel and perform even better. And if you find yourself in the same boat as me, hopefully this video was interesting and motivating for you. Uh, it's kind of funny how Strava stalking some friends and getting a little bit jealous of how little power they have to put out has completely changed into just trying to make changes for better health in daily life. And those just happen to also improve cycling performance. Well, eat healthily, ride safe, and see you all in the next video.